accordingly. Now I have also made my own instructions in the notepad file, what needs to be done. And I'll be following these instructions because the steps are, steps are a little bit complicated and we just need to keep in mind what we are doing. So step number one is the fuzzing. And let me start my virtual machine. So I have this virtual machine, Windows 7. So I installed this application, SL Mail. I downloaded it from the internet. And uh, you have to run this application as the administrator. So once you install it, you go here in the all programs. Let me just uh, close it and start it for you from the beginning. So SL products, and here you can see SL mail configuration. You can right click and you can run this as administrator. And if you go to the control, you can see here that uh, the application has not started yet. So the first thing you need to do is that you need to start this application. Okay. And the next thing you need to do is that you have immunity debugger. So if you download that virtual machine that I was talking about on the platform, you can, you will have immunity debugger. You also need to run this as an administrator. Okay. Now, what you need to do is file and click on attach. And when you click on attach, you need to look for the application that is running SL mail. So it's a little bit. Yeah, so you can see here SL mail and attach it. Okay, so don't get scared by this. Um, we'll just focus on some of the important stuff. As you can see, it is pointed here as registers. So these are the registers, these are the memory addresses. On this side, um, so the ones that we are interested in, which I call it as the points of interest, that is the ESP. And the next one is the EIP, okay, here. So this is the instruction pointer basically, which points to the next instruction. And ESP actually points out to the stack, uh, you know, where the program is currently. So what we are interested in is that we need to find out the EIP, uh, that where in the memory, once the we crash the application, what is the location of this uh, instruction pointer? Once we find that, we going to point it to the memory location where we will have our uh, malicious code, or you want to call it payload, will be there, and then it will basically execute that payload. Rather than just crashing, it will point and force the system to go to that place where in the stack where we have our code, and then run that code, and that code obviously will be making the reverse connection to the uh, probably you know the the metasploit or met, or some other uh, listener that we have and then we will get get the session right so these are the two addresses esp and eip that we are interested in all right so let me log into my now before i do that cuz i have tried this a couple of times. Let me create a new folder. I'll just move my scripts here, the one that I already have. Okay, coming back here. So like I said, we have the virtual machine for Windows. We have uh, the SL mail running. We have the 
immunity debugger as well. So the next step, step was that we need to download and use this further script. I'm going to download it. I'll download anyways. Okay, so we have this puzzle script here. I'm going to copy it and move it to my Kali Linux desktop. Okay, so the step number one is that we want to crash the application. Okay, this is step number one. Before I start or before I try to crash the application, let me just close my virtual box because it's making my system slow. Okay, going back to the windows. So once you have it, you have attached it, you need to play. You can see the play button on the top left here. You just need to play this. So now my application SSMail is running through immunity debugger. So whatever I'm doing, whatever instructions are going to be processed, the immunity debugger will be displaying it, what is happening with the application, right? That is the whole idea of the debugger. So going back here, uh, I have a, downloaded the script from the platform, which is fuzzer script. I'm just going to rename it as one because we will be using like four or five scripts for this lab. So I'll just rename it as one fuzzer CD desktop. All right, so zoom in. Okay, so this is the script that I'm talking about. I will open this script. Now, you don't need to really understand or go through the whole script, but what it basically is, the script is doing is that it is going to send um, alphabet A uh, and it is in the loop until the application crashes. It is also sending a test user and as a pass, it is passing the string variable. Now, what we need to do here is in the beginning. So this whole script, you don't need to change anything here, not much. So I will repeat again, it's actually sending characters A uh, until the application is going to crash. And what we are interested in is we are we are interested in knowing when exactly the application will crash. And we want to find out the memory location for that. So the only change you have to do here is that in the IP address, you need to uh, give the IP address of the Windows machine or the target. So let me check the IP address. So the IP address of the Windows machine is 192.168.36.131. And .131. All right. Now the port number, you don't need to put it in quotes. The port number is uh, 110, which is basically the port used by the SMTP protocol, simple mail transfer protocol. And SL mail, like I said, it's a mail application. Okay, so the only changes I have done is that I have put here the IP address of the Windows, the target, and then the port number on which this application is running, which is 110. If you want to verify it, you can verify it with the Nmap as well, whether this application is running on which port. So, you know, you can confirm it. But since we already know, so I'm not going to run Nmap there. Okay, now let's just save this script and close it. All right, and all I need to do is need to run one buzzer script dot py. Okay, now you will see that it started showing 100, one byte, 100 bytes, 300. So it is actually sending these many bytes until the application crashes. So it has reached 2700 and while it is trying for 2900, it has stopped here. Let's go and check the application. 
if you see here, the, the application has crashed. And how do I know it has crashed? You can see at the bottom, it says access violation when exceeding 41414141. Now, this 41 is actually the hexadecimal representation of alphabet A. Okay, so we have successfully crashed, crashed the application after probably somewhere around 2700 bytes because these 2900 bytes were not processed. So after receiving 2700 bytes of data, that is the alphabet A that we have sent, the application has actually crashed. So this is one point that we need to keep in to our notice that it reached 2700 bytes, approximately somewhere around 2700, maybe more, maybe a little bit less, okay? But we don't know for sure exactly after how many bytes this application crashed. Another thing that you need to notice here is um, if you look at the ES, sorry, EIP value here, the next instruction pointer, it has been overwritten by the alphabet A, 414141. But again, we still don't know at what, you know, after how many bytes we have the address of EIP. So we still don't know. Is it 2700 bytes? Is it less than 2700 bytes? Is it more than 2700 bytes? So we are not sure at this point, but we do know that the application has crashed and it was overwritten. The buffer flow, a buffer overflow was successfully executed. And as you can see that it has been uh, overwritten by 4141. If I right click on ESP, for instance, and I, it's so small, I can see. If I go and follow it in the dump, you can see on the left-hand side here, it has been actually overwritten by alphabet A, 41, 41, 41. You can see it here on the bottom left side, right? Okay. So step number one. Step number one is done, that we were able to crash the application. And we found out that somewhere around 2700 bytes, the application crashed. Now, step number two is that we want to find out the offset. By offset, we, we, we mean that we need to find out exactly after how many bytes it was crashed and from which byte the next instruction, which is EIP, is going to start, right? So for that, we have actually a script uh, within Kali Linux. I will share this notepad file with you as well. So I will stop it here. And every time, once we finish uh, one of our running our script and we crash the application, what you need to do is you need to close the immunity debugger. You need to stop the application. And you need to start it again. And you may have to do it maybe five, six, or maybe more than that during this lab run as administrator so this step you will be doing a lot file attach um, sl mail and then you can press run for the next step and at the bottom you can check on the bottom right side that it's running okay now coming back here so, so in order to find the off, offset, I told you that you can use the script. It's called actually pattern underscore create. So this script is actually available in Metasploit. And with minus L, we have written 2700 bytes. Okay. Now, once I run this, so what it is going to do is that once I run this script, it will generate a certain pattern of uh, bytes. And those that pattern, we are again going to execute or you know modify our script. And then again, we are going to crash the application by using this new pattern. So again, 
what we are interested in is that we want to find out the next instruction pointer and we want to find out the exact number of bytes after which the application is crashing. By sending rent, by sending a, 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 a we, we cannot find that, right? So that is why we are using this script. Okay. So now we, you can see that it has generated actually 2700 bytes of a unique pattern that we will use in our next script. Okay, what I normally do is I will use the same script. I will just copy it. I will paste it and I will modify. So don't modify the first script, okay? I'm just, you can do that, but you know, I want to keep uh, those scripts as well. So I will just rename it and I will call it two. And instead of the fuzzer, I will call it Patron dot py. Okay. Now what I want to do in this is that now we want to send this pattern to the target machine, right? So we don't need to send character A also. We don't need this loop as well for what we need is I'll just declare a new variable we can call it pattern and the pattern that was generated here I will just copy it and paste it yeah direct message just a minute please I'm sharing my whole screen. Okay. Let me just you guys just give me a minute. Okay, guys, so sorry for the Okay, coming back. So what I'm doing is that I'm actually creating a new script in which I have generated a pattern that I showed you by using pattern underscore create script. I have pasted this pattern here um, in a new variable and then need to do a little bit modification here that I'm sending this pattern right okay is there anything i will just change this message as well so that you know because this was for the fuzzing you can write anything here sending a pattern to the target application okay All right, uh, I'm just looking if there is anything else. Oh, sorry. Let me save this. So my application is running on the other side. All I need to do is to run this new script, which is to pattern.py. Unexpected indent. All right, I think uh, these spaces are creating a problem. So no spaces, okay.
All right. I think it should be okay now. All right. Not seeing one more error. Need to close it with the quotes. Okay, now it has sent. Coming back here. Mm, I think. Let me just double check. There's a mistake in the script. Let me just verify the script. One minute, guys. So let me restart the application and so this thing will happen with you as well several times. So you need to be patient. and execute the application. Then okay. So I've sent this pattern to the application now if you can see here now, the value of the EIP has changed. Okay, before it was uh, uh, 414141, which basically meant AAA. Now, since we have sent a unique pattern, so you can see here as well the ESP value. Now it's not 4141, it is actually the one, the bytes that we sent. Now, this is basically the EIP address. So I'm going to copy this one. Copy to the clipboard because we need that for the next step. Looks like I have it there somewhere. Yeah. So I have already noted down. I just want to be sure if it's the same value yeah so this is the 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 new value of the eip pointer okay now what we need to do is if we want to find out the offset we need to use another script which is again available uh, in the metasploit it is called pattern underscore offset so if you use this script and give the eip value it is going to give you the exact number of bytes after which the application has crashed Remember I told you that uh, when the application crashed, it actually showed like it crashed somewhere around 2,700 bytes, but we don't know exactly how many bytes, right? So when I get the, the EIP value by sending the, the pattern that we created uh, with this particular script, now we will use this script in order to find out the So 
So by using this script, we are going to get the number of exact number of bytes after which the application has crashed. So you can see here that after 2,606 bytes, the application crashed. Okay. Now, at least now we know that the EIP pointer is coming after 2,606 bytes, right? We still don't know the, you know, how many bytes the EIP has, which I'm going to tell you how many bytes uh, are there for the EIP, uh, the instruction pointer. But we know now that after 2,606 bytes, the application actually crashes. Okay. Now, let me take you back here. If you look at the instruction pointer here, it has basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, eight numbers, right? These are actually hexadecimal numbers. And remember, each hexadecimal number can be represented by four bits, okay? So if we want to find out how many bytes are in this basically, uh, you know, pointer address. So two digits is equal to one byte. So there are eight digits. It means that the um, EIP uh, instruction pointers, uh, you know, this address basically or has four bytes in total. Now, 2,606 bytes. After those, there are four bytes for the EIP. And this is what we are interested in actually now that we want to find out once we find out that, okay, this is the exact location of the ESP, we are going to point it to our, our own memory location from where the, uh, uh, the malicious code is going to get executed, right? Okay. So, so far it's clear, guys. I know it's a little bit difficult in the beginning, but um, I think, uh, so far, there's nothing really complicated that we have gone through. Am I right? Inshallah. Okay. We see yes, when we begin to do it. Yeah, I mean, I told you. now is good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I told you guys, I mean, this is not a straightforward lab in which you basically just run and exploit and, you know, get the reverse shell. Because it is uh, more like a manual buffer overflow attack that we're trying to, to launch, okay? All right. Now, once we have found out that these are the exact number of bytes after which the application crashes, now we want to make sure actually that are the next four bytes for EIP, this is, Okay, we, we found out by using the script, but we are still not sure, right? So we want to verify that the next four bytes are basically for the instruction pointer. So how are we going to do that? Let me show you. Okay, I have the script with me. I'm just going to show you. Actually, I, I keep modifying the same script, but with the, you know, a little bit changes. So let me show you the script. So this is a very simple script. Let me open it in the notepad. I think it's better. Um, so again, uh, these first two lines are the same in every script. So instead of sending the pattern that uh, we sent in the previous uh, uh, um, previous script, what we are going to do here is that we are going to declare a new variable pattern equal to the character A multiply by 2606. Now, why do we multiply it with 2606? Because we know that the application is going to crash after these many bytes, right? Plus, I'm adding four Bs. Why I'm adding four Bs? Because I don't want to, I want to find out now. I want to verify that the, after 2606 bytes, 
we have the four bytes of the instruction pointer. And how can I verify that if I replace it with something else? It's not necessary that you have to replace it with BBB. You can replace it with CCC also, okay? So I want to just make sure that the next four bytes are basically the instruction pointer bytes. So that is why I have declared this variable that first overrun the application with A's 2,606 bytes. And after that, add four more bytes of C, alphabet C. So again, nothing changed here. We just declare the variable and send, uh, you know, replace it here. Now, let me just try to run this script and see what will happen. So the application is running. Now it's paused. Let me start it again. Like I said, every time you have to repeat this. Every time you're running a new script, you have to start the application and you have to run the immunity debugger again. Okay, file, attach. Um, Play. Okay, so the application is running. Now, what I'm interested in doing is when I run this new script, I want to see here the alphabet C. If I get CCC, it means we have exactly overwritten the instruction pointer with the alphabet that we want to replace. And this then it will become sure that after 2,606 bytes, the next four bytes belong to the instruction pointer. If it is not replaced by the alphabet C, it means that we got it all wrong. And then basically what it means is that, um, you know, something else, you know, we maybe the number of bytes were, were not correct, okay? Okay. I think something happened. So I'm restarting it again. And by the way, sometimes if you keep crashing the application, it is also possible that the windows will also, <laughs> sometimes it also shuts down or crashes. Because I've been crashing it like 20 times now. Keyboard administrator, control, start, yes. Just want to make sure none of my script is running right. Okay. All right. So let's start this. See, now my application is also messed up kind of. The whole thing is, is the memory map, what is the CPU track? Something went wrong with my system, a lot. There's something wrong, but I will just continue. Let's see what happens. Okay. And play the application. Hmm. 
and there are no breakpoints. Okay, let's see. Let's run the script. So what I'm going to execute now is this particular script in which after 2,606 bytes, the EIP should be replaced by B. I think I changed it to C maybe. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, yes, you changed it to C. Okay. So Python 3. See. Actually, it worked. It shows here access violation. And you can see here at the bottom it says uh, when executing 434343. Four, three, four, three. So 414141 is actually for alphabet A and then 42 is for alphabet B and 43 is alphabet C. So actually it is successful, but somehow the view of uh, my immunity debugger is all messed up. Okay, guys, uh, what I'm going to do is let me just re reboot my machine, okay? It was successful actually, but I just want to show you exactly that the EIP pointer is, is replaced by C. Once I finish this step, I will just give you an overview again what we have done so far. Maybe one more step we can do after four steps, you can start working on the lab and then the two more steps that are remaining, five and six, probably we can do it tomorrow. And remember, this is the Thursday lab and today was actually the continu continuation of this lab, okay? We are going one step behind, but that's okay. Because uh, in the coming weeks, weeks, we don't have many labs. So I'll be running some new labs, which are not there on the platform. We'll try to make that interesting for you guys. Okay. I hope my immunity debugger is okay now. Run as admin. Come on, what happened to my immunity debugger? It's so messed up. Let's see, batch, SL mail. Only shows the, the registers memory CPU and breakpoint watches source.
very strange. Instead of the abrogation, my email to debugger seems like this has crashed. Okay. Anyways, guys, you can see at the bottom that um, it actually is successful, as you can see, 43 here. If I replace it, for example, uh, this particular script with... With, 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 with. B, it should show me 42, which means that after after these many bytes of sending A, the instruction pointer, which is EIP, will be replaced by B. Okay, so this is just kind of you can say is a verification of uh, or proof of concept, you can say. Like I said, you have to do it plenty of times. Yes, run as admin, file, patch, personal name, patch, and play. So if it shows this time 42, it basically means Whatever we did is okay. All right. So sending these coming to the debugger, you can see at the bottom that it has been replaced by 4242 which is the hexadecimal representation of B. Oh, found it. Yeah, so now you can see it here. I was wondering where is it gone. So now you can see the EIP value here, guys. It is 4242424. So it has exactly replaced the four bytes of the instruction pointer with the alphabet B. So now we know for sure that after 2606 bytes, there is the instruction pointer. Once you know that where is the instruction pointer, all you need to do is to actually replace it with, before replacing it with the memory address, we need to actually find out, uh, you know, the memory address of jump PSP. And I will tell you what is jump PSP probably in the next session. So I have completed three, sec three steps uh, till this point. Uh, where is it? Is this fine? Yeah, so I have uh, completed step number three, which is that you have created a new script to overwrite the EIP value with the Bs. If you want, we can go for one more step, which is finding the bad characters, or we can do the next three steps uh, in tomorrow's session, because otherwise, I don't want you guys to, you know, get buffer overflow in your brain and you get all confused what is going on so so far i will just give you a quick review of what we we were trying to do so we have this smail application running on the windows we are interested in uh, launching a buffer overflow attack uh, and how we are doing it that we basically uh, create a script which sends the alphabet a until the application crashes. So the first script is all about just crashing the application. Um, but at the same time, we want to find out like after how many bytes it actually crashes. So we got the rough idea that after 2700 bytes, the application or before 2700 bytes, the application is crashing, but we are still not sure, right? This was step number one. Step number two was that we want to find out the offset, which means exactly the number of bytes when the application crashes and where is the instruction pointer the next four bytes 
So for that, what we did was that we used the script, which is called pattern underscore create with minus L option and 2700 bytes. It actually creates a 2700 bytes of unique pattern. We again create a new script, send those bytes, 2700 bytes to the application. And then we note down the value of the EIP, the instruction point. So the value that we find out in the instruction pointer was this 39694438. We use this to find out the offset and the script that we used was again present in the Metasploit pattern underscore offset uh, with minus Q option and giving the EIP value, we find out exactly that the offset is 2606 bytes. Once we find out that this is the bytes after which the EIP pointer starts. So we know that the instruction pointer has four bytes. That is why in the next script, we sent B letter B four times. And the reason why we are doing this, that we want to know and we want to verify that yes, the instruction pointer is actually after 2606 bytes. So the next step, what we did, we replaced the EIP with the, with the alphabet B, and that was actually shown here when it is replaced by 4242424, it means that this has been replaced by the letter B exactly. So with this, we have completed the step number three. Now, step number four is actually about finding bad characters. What is bad characters? Now, not every application, it actually accepts uh, all, the, all the characters. Some of the characters, the applications, they don't accept, which means if you create a malicious payload or if you create a malicious script and you point this instruction pointer to run this script, if that script has some bad pointers, sorry, bad characters, uh, the application will not run it. So you, it will crash, but it will not execute your payload that you're trying to. So we want to find, and by the way, these bad characters, they are different for different uh, applications. So for every application, if you are trying to exploit it, you need to find out which bad characters you should avoid. So I think uh, if you can complete till step number three today, I will go through step number four, five, and six tomorrow to complete this lab, and then we will move on. What do you guys think? Right, guys? I need your answer, guys. Do you want to complete this till this point, and then we'll continue? Yes, okay. All right, so let me share this uh, notepad file with you, okay? The scripts I'm not going to share with you. One of the scripts that you have to download and the the next two scripts that I, um, that I showed you, you have to create it on your own. Just you have to do a little bit of modification because if I give you the scripts, you will run the scripts and, you know, there's no point. All right? Okay. 